remember what happened. <laughs> like, season let's three. try to remember what happens. The lake. It was right coming from the lake. That wonderful moment of freedom. That was really wonderful. Um, as our characters to find that liberating moment. You know, I love that. That was amazing. What we're paying the price. <laughs> the price we're paying is uh, we get back to reality. They snap us back really quickly. Um, and that moment uh, becomes even more important, you know, that moment of freedom, thinking back. But uh, reality hits us hard when we return to Litchfield. It's uh, dangerous, it's overcrowded, uh, it's a new world. How does it feel when, um, I, I guess at the start of every season or at different points when they introduce new characters to what is already, I guess, a very close-knit group? How do you feel about that and is it difficult to integrate new people into the show? <laughs> I, uh, I would have to say, without giving this much thought, which is one of my great downfalls, uh, I think it's always difficult, especially when the effect is tsunami, as it is in season four. We're not talking about a small body of people. This is a vast number of women being introduced into this palette, which was already overcrowded. So you add to that uh, established and essential conflict uh, an extraordinary attention, and it's going to be a real trouble. Um, for both of your characters, the kitchen has been an important part of uh, what makes them work and what makes them function, I guess, in, in, the, in the prison. And this series, we've got the introduction of the character Judy King, who comes in and, I guess, as a culinary goddess. Um, how does that affect your characters in the show? <laughs> Gloria doesn't care. I, you know, I mean, look, she's, Gloria is a, is a person who really likes to mind her own business. She really is a woman who's very simple, you know, let me just get through this day and we'll be fine. And even being thrust into the kitchen, that was a surprise for her and she was going to make it work. But it's not something that she fought for. She's, she's easy breezy unless you cross her. And she really uh, doesn't really consider other people much of a threat, to be honest. Except Sophia. Well, that's an emotional... When it affects your private life. Yes, definitely. That's the only time. But also, I, I would say that you are quite, uh, quite passionate about the kitchen. Once you know, she's in there, she is, but because she's passionate about whatever she gets into. Right. And, and for her, that kitchen was home. She made it into a home. She's a mother. She's a caregiver. She's, she wants to take care of people. And this kitchen gave her the most normal setting you can possibly have. And she then took on the role, real role, of mother to all of the Latinas that are most of the time, you know, not present. <laughs> she's controlling everyone. She's trying to control. But that to her was, was she really felt when she was in there that she wanted to keep it, you know, until, of course, her son becomes the, the priority. Mm -hmm. and, and what does the kitchen mean to Red, then? The kitchen is Red. Mm -hmm. And I'm not speaking metaphorically. This is w what I have lived for. This is how I have overcome all the odds. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, uh, her essential character and where I, my metal lies in, in the kitchen. It's a, a metaphor for food. It's a metaphor for love. It's a metaphor for family. Everything that allows me to surpass the confinement of this extraordinarily bleak and depressive atmosphere. So without it, I am adrift. So I'm constantly on a path to get back to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Something that's uh, found fascinating throughout the run of the show is Red's relationship with Healy. Um, how, how has that progressed and do you think there is a genuine affection, friendship or nothing, I guess, between them? It's curious when you ask that, right? Because you're a journalist and a nice guy and I'm just an actor, right? Of a certain age. But I get a little hot under the collar about it because it stirs up in me a thing about Red, which is that she's not a liar. She doesn't lie. So if I've established a relationship with Healy that transcends the, the traditional or the conventional, it's because it's real. Mm. I like him, but I also know what the limits are. So I think when Genji Cohen touched that, tapped into that, she tapped into something very vulnerable in the character of Red and the, and the character and of Kate Mulhoun. Mm. And vis-a-vis -vis Healy, mm. it was a, a sort of a magical slash dangerous uh, Chemistry. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where it goes. I mean, season four, as you may or may not know, I don't know, did you watch it? I've, I've started watching it up to four episodes in. 
Oh, you've watched four episodes. Mm -hmm. That's three more than I've seen. How about you? <laughs> you have three more than I've seen. Uh -huh. well, there, is, there is an episode. Are we good? There is an episode where we learn more about Healy, which is kind of what I'm, I'm that's right. talking about, where you see yeah. his backstory develop more. Um, and that's very good. I think Red is sensitive to his complexities. Mm -hmm. I understand. But none, we none of us are what you would call balanced in this petri dish. But I particularly, I, I, I spark to his frailty, and he to mine. It's quite lovely. We'll see where it goes. It doesn't go, it, season four is about something else entirely. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned uh, Sophia, the relationship between Glory and Sophia. Um, does Glory feel guilty about what she's done to Sophia and leaving her in, in uh, maximum security? Of course, you can see that, you know, in season three, even while it was happening, that it wasn't, you know, Aleda, the character Aleda tried to make it and was making it into another thing uh, about her being transgender and attacking her in that way, where with Gloria, it had nothing to do with that. It was about two mothers trying to survive, trying to be mothers to their children outside of the prison. Um, Gloria takes it very, very personal when Sophia, you know, stops the visits basically by stop, you know, stopping the, the transportation for having. So that too, Gloria becomes the issue. You know, you took away my son. You took away my son. Um, these women are just fighting for, to be mothers. They just want to be mothers and they have a lot in common. And Gloria does feel bad. And you can see that while it's happening. She talks about it. She says, this is not about, you know, her being a man, you know, she tells Alayda, this is about mothers. These are two mothers. Um, and you're going to see the development continue. You know, this story continues to evolve, and that's the beauty of what Genji does, Genji Cohen and the writers, is that they don't, they let stories breathe. They start them out, they let them breathe, and that's life. So I, I'm, I'm enjoying the journey that I am uh, having with Gloria and the story of uh, Gloria and Sophia. I think a series like this, which has so many episodes where you do get the opportunity to let it breathe and develop, is, is something that everyone's kind of discovering for the first time in terms of binge-watching and having the Netflix when, as and when they want to watch it. Um, is that, have you guys tried watching a series on that format? Is it something that you're used to watching? I have to tell you that I've binged uh, House of Cards. I've binged Bloodline. Have you seen Bloodline? It's fantastic. That's very good. Mm, love yeah. it. So, yes. You know, I, as much as I go, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take it in and savor it and put it away. I go full throttle um, when I really enjoy something. It's human nature. Yeah. When you fall in love, do you measure yourself? <laughs> when you're hungry and a plate of food is put in front of you, do you pace yourself? Mm -hmm. No, you eat mm -hmm. and you love. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's addictive. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, one, one final question for you, Kate. Um, are you, do, you, do you feel like now you're more well-known for Orange is the New Black, or is it still Star Trek <laughs> that people come to you for? I don't really know. I mean, I'm very bad at percentages, but I would say that Captain Jane just changed the nature of, sort of television. Do you know women in television? She was iconic. Uh, and Red is too, in her own way. So uh, I think that I'm just very, very lucky. Mm -hmm. And do you think since then there have been that many strong female characters, or has it taken a while to get to the stage where we are with Orange is the New Black? They're getting better, you know. England has a lot of wonderful female characters. The divine Sarah Lancashire among them. England's in the vanguard. We're getting better, We're but getting we've better. a long way to go. You know, it's still a boys club. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Really enjoyed the show. You should catch up with it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a good show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching... Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!